from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Black-owned green technology company GTEC is currently running a mine dump rehabilitation project in Randfontein, west of Johannesburg, on one of South Africa-focused gold miner Mintail's tailing sites. Anine Vermeulen has the story. GTEC is rehabilitating the wasteland by restoring indigenous biomes and biodiversity by planting polylactic acid, or PLA, a biodegradable thermoplastic roll planter that allows the growth of uprooted plants and produce on any type of surface on a one hectare piece of land. GTEC business developer and marketing manager Bonga Masoka tells Mining Weekly that GTEC is trying to demonstrate the viability of rehabilitating wasteland using GTEC strategies through its pilot project. He adds that the cost of the project is 350,000 rand and it is wholly funded by GTEC. The next phase of the project will include the planting of biofuel and other bioenergy feedstock to produce biodiesel. This is GTEC Holdings pilot project for rehabilitation. Um, it started in 2012. Um, we're trying to demonstrate the viability of um, rehabilitating using GTEC strategy. We have two strategies. One is to establish indigenous biodiversity of mine tailings and the second one is to plant uh, biofuel feedstocks. Um, we're looking at sorghum and soya bean to produce um, uh, bioethanol and biodiesel. He points out that the benefits of PLA include the rehabilitation of mine dumps, the restoration of indigenous biomes and biodiversity, greening of gardens, fields and land, and the mitigation of soil erosion and water runoff. Masoka states that GTEC has been in talks with a gold miner to plant biofuel feedstocks in the form of sorghum as part of its next pilot project and hopes to use between one and three hectares of the mine's tailings dumps for the pilot project. The new project will involve partnerships with the Agricultural Research Council and the Council for Scientific Industrial Research. For the new pilot, um, where we're planning to plant biofuel feedstocks, we have ARC, um, Agricultural Research Council, um, and um, CSIR, Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. Um, they are some of our partners for the next pilot. Um, ARC will mainly be involved in the first stage of the pilot, in the first process of the pilot, which is planting the feedstocks, looking all, um, um, planting of the feedstocks, and overseeing the process of to harvesting. Uh, yeah. And who is financing it? Well, we are planning on seeking funding collectively, but if not, I think all the stakeholders will be able to contribute financially to the success of the pilot. Seed manufacturer Cicada is also involved in the project, which uses Cicada seed blend called Biomasome. Cicada sales representative Eleanor Glaum says that a lot of research and development has gone into the Biomasome blend. We were approached by GTEC um, to make use of our uh, proprietary seed blend. It's called Biomasome trademark product, it's um, a combination of Pioneer, Subclimax and Climax grass species, specifically formulated for this kind of application, rehabilitation, that kind of thing. Um, and this was in the end of 2013 and the trial started, so we're going into the third season now. Seen some very interesting results. Um, obviously it's going to be a long-term study, I would say. Um, we'd like to see in the subsequent seasons what's, what's going to happen, but so far it's looking very interesting and, and we've liked to be involved. Other news making headlines this week, DBSA is bullish on its loans ramp up as it reports record disbursements. Clover's African expansion plans to get a $34 million boost and Independent Elements upgrades its technology. The Development Bank of Southern Africa remained optimistic that it could ramp up loan disbursements to 25 billion rand a year by 2018. For the 15-16 financial year, we're aiming to have disbursement of 17.8 billion rand. And again, ladies and gentlemen, what that picture tells us is that we are aiming at breaking records year in, year out. 1617 financial year we're targeting 22 billion in disbursements and 17 18 25 billion and again it is all in the name of our quest to bend the arc of history 
JSE listed dairy products producer Clover, which has been voted the fifth strongest brand in South Africa, is eyeing a $34 million investment in Africa in line with its expansion strategy. Last year we still had 160 million rands worth of income from the non. Uh, of course there's a lot of cost, so we can take out about 43 million rands worth of cost and we've in introduced Dairy Bell, the part that we haven't had, as a new principal to our business, which is another 40 million. So, um, then, the normal growth of, of our own products will take up a little bit of that and then uh, we are putting a lot of hope on the yogurt market that's going to still growing and then that will also start filling up the gap. We put aside uh, that we would want to uh, fill that gap uh, or eradicate that gap uh, over a period of eight, a year to 18 months and we seem to be ahead of that uh, schedule. Benoni-based industrial elements manufacturer Independent Elements is adopting a number of new technologies that will enhance the reliability of the company's product range. Nanotechnology or nanocarbon technology is, is going to be big in the heating industry. There's a lot of development going on regarding um, nanotechnology and whereas we traditionally work with a wire, a heating metallic wire, nanotechnology works with carbon fibers. Your application and the way we will make elements will greatly change. So um, within, I, I would say within maybe three to five years, 2020, there will be a, a, a great development in the way products are used and made for the heating industry. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.